Hi, I'm Jenny and welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are going to do a retro recipe. It is going to be a retro deviled egg recipe. And I've been looking through all these retro recipes. I have collections of grandma's recipes. Uh, not just my grandma's, other grandma's. Um, I found some really fun things. And since it's springtime and close to Easter, I thought maybe we'd make some things. This is the Angry Deviled Egg Recipe. So for this recipe, you're gonna need 12 hard-boiled eggs. And I don't know how you like to hard-boil your eggs. I know everybody does them different. Um, some people still boil them in um, water, which I do when I do lots of eggs. But for these 12 eggs, I actually have this cute handy dandy. I'll show you. A little egg cooker. Now, normally I don't like things that just do one thing. Um, this does. This comes with little omelet pans in here, but this will make 12 eggs, and it does it fast. It's like I can't remember if it's eight or 12 minutes. I didn't pay attention to it, <laughs> but it's got a little steam vent. Um, put you down a little bit further here. The top comes off. This, this thing's so easy. I love it. So it comes with a little measure cup and you put your four ounces of water in the bottom tray that heats up. You put this on and you put your eggs in here. Now your eggs, they go in with um, the small side up and you use this thing. It's got a little puncture. You puncture each one of them and then you layer them. Take that back out. I'm gonna put this back in but your ring goes on and then your second egg tray and then your lid anyway super easy I love my instant pot but I don't love my instant pot for hard-boiled eggs because this is much faster the steam starts to heat up and it's like instant so if you're interested in this I can't say enough good things I don't even know who makes it um, I will look it up um, I got it on Amazon. It was like $12. So I will look it up and leave the Amazon link down below if you're interested in this little egg cooker. You can also do omelets in it, poached eggs. I've done it all. It's just a really fun thing and my granddaughter loves it. Now I let all my eggs cool and I just want to show you um, these eggs were fresh now they always tell you like if you're for easter at easter time to buy your eggs two weeks ahead of time so that they'll peel easy you know in my steamer i didn't add any baking soda i didn't add any salt i didn't add any vinegar i didn't add anything extra that people say that makes eggs easier to peel now and to peel eggs this is a, another common mistake people make um, they start from the bottom when you peel an egg first of all you need to crush the shell completely, roll it, and then start from the top. Your egg, This will come completely clean. It's so much easier when you do it from the top. These are fresh eggs. I just bought these yesterday. But between steaming them in that little egg steamer and the way I just peeled it, these things peel so easy and nice. I'm gonna rinse this off. I'm gonna make this easy and I'm just doing it in my hand. I have my egg tray here. I'm just gonna cut my egg and look how beautiful those eggs are. They cook, this, that little egg cooker cooks them so perfect. They're not all green, they're perfect. I'm just gonna put them right in there. I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. I'm not gonna use any special equipment. I am just strictly gonna cut them in my hand, but be very careful if you do it this way. Don't put a lot of pressure to um, cut your hand with your knife. <laughs> and if you're not comfortable doing it this way, definitely put it on a cutting board. I don't want you to cut yourself. And these just really pop right out. The only thing about it is when you... Um, pierce the top, it kind of sinks in right here so you're not gonna get a point. But for as easy as it was to make these things, I don't care. <laughs> I 
I'm loving this old retro recipe thing. Oh my gosh. You know, it brings back memories to looking at my grandma's recipes. And actually, I have an ex-boyfriend that um, I grew up with. We've been friends a long time. We were, we were friends a long time. And um, I have his grandma's recipes. I don't know how I'm the one that ended up with them, but I did. I even asked if he wanted them back, and he said no. So, there you go. Okay, my egg tray won't hold all of these, so I'm just going to put these over onto the side for extras. Now, if your knife gets too dirty, you're going to want to clean it off before you cut any more. Well, I just squeezed this egg a little hard. <laughs> Good thing this is an extra one. Okay. I put those to the side and we're going to work on the filling. I am not using any special equipment. I am using a bowl and a fork. I'm just going to crush these yolks first. Now, Easter time in my house, I put all this in the food processor to make it easier, but and it gets really smooth. But since it's a retro recipe, I bet they didn't put them in. <laughs> I bet nobody, well, maybe some people did, but I bet they didn't use their food processors for double eggs. At least I don't remember my mom or my grandma doing that. I remember them doing it just like this. Okay, I'm gonna start putting the stuff in. Um, fourth a cup of mayo. I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna plop it in. Does that look like a fourth? Yeah, okay. Okay, there's my fourth cup of mayo. And this calls for a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper. So I'm gonna put that in. It's a lot of black pepper. A fourth a teaspoon of dry mustard. Two teaspoons of sugar. A half a teaspoon of salt. And we are going to use three tablespoons of horseradish, which makes these deviled eggs angry, right? Okay, one tablespoon. I love, love horseradish. So I came across this recipe and I put it in deviled eggs anyway, but I think I, I usually mix it with wasabi. And I don't usually use this much, so. When I saw this angry deviled egg recipe, I thought I am so making this. Okay, there's my horseradish. And I need two teaspoons of prepared mustard. And I need one teaspoon of white vinegar. All right, I'm gonna get all this mixed in. That's a lot of horseradish. Delicious. 
My husband will love these. He loves horseradish. I'm going to switch to a rubber spatula. Luna. Just so I can press it a little bit. I just want to get these mashed really, really well. Sorry, you can probably see my cord. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. I'm gonna taste it just to make sure there's enough salt. There is. And those are horseradishy. If you don't like horseradish, I suggest <laughs> you don't make this one. If you do like it, but you don't like it quite as horseradishy, you can cut back on the tablespoons of horseradish. But I went full on in with my horseradish. Okay, and I am just going to use two spoons. To fill these. I'm not going to bother with a piping bag or anything. Certainly an angry double egg. <laughs> Very horseradishy. Mm. I love it. I love horseradish. So I use three tablespoons in mine. You can cut back if you want a little less. They are pretty potent with that much um, horseradish in it. So you could change it up and make it a little more spicy on the end with, like I said, adding cayenne, a little pinch of cayenne to the top, or you can put a little bit of hot sauce in the, in the, um, yolk. You can put some herbs in there, whatever you want. But the angry version, pretty darn good. <laughs> so if you have spice lovers in your family or horseradish lovers in your family, these are perfect. So if you've had these angry deviled eggs in the past, um, if your family used to make them, let me know in the comments below. Drop me a line. Let me know if you've made these before, if it's a family tradition of yours. I'm curious how many people used to have these. Thanks for joining me with another retro recipe. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. And I will leave the recipe and what I use for these angry deviled eggs in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.